So it is wrong because of the other person's perception, is it? Why is it wrong? He worked hard for it. He worked hard for it. Correct. It is his. Okay. You would be wrong by stealing money because uh, it's something wrong to do. You can earn money to various ways other than stealing. So there are a lot of ways which is uh, right for you. For example, you can do a job or anything else. Okay. Every situation has many choices, but in the end, it will come to poor decisions about Any situation is always going to be right and wrong, even when you know it. How much you try to convince yourself that whatever it is right, uh, instead you know what's wrong with it. So if you follow that, then so, but that depends on how much my conscience is true. No doubt, my conscience is one of the very important factors to determine what is right and wrong. But if my conscience is not true, I may feel from inside that it is right that I stole. I may feel right that the, 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 the terrorist who blows himself up feels that it is the right thing that person is doing. Because he is tuned to that, that, that idea that you think like that, you see. So, we have to understand one thing that yes, right and wrong 
appears to be relative. Brighton Brown has many different uh, grey areas, which is not why it is so easy to determine exactly this is light, this is not, it is not white and black. But that's why the thinking power is very important and discrimination is important. We should be able to separate in a grey area what is black, what is white, and then choose the black. Uh, so choose the white. That's why the beauty is given to us as human beings. So what determines what is right and wrong? First and foremost will be the universal values. Would you want anybody to steal from you? Then how can you say that you stealing from somebody gets justified? It cannot get justified. You don't want anybody to steal from you. Would you want anybody to come and tell lies to you? You want transparency? You want truth? Then you have to give to it. So, simple way to know right and wrong is do unto others what you want them to do to you. That is one possibility, one way. But that alone cannot decide. There are different factors, and which is why, because the situations become complex and challenging to identify, there is not one parameter. There are many parameters to understand certain things. And then come to a decision. So one is the universal values. If you want to live, do you have right to take somebody's life? Would you like somebody to come and kill you? No. Or hurt you, harm you, damage you? No. So live and let live. Can we say that it depends on perception from person to person? Some ideologies feel that if you don't believe in their ideology, you deserve to be killed. They are right in their own way. Can we say that? That is their thinking, Swamiji. Right and wrong depends on person to person, situation to situation. If that person feels they want to kill me, it's all right. Will we say that? It's a fundamental right to live and let live. So, universal values, they will govern first what is right and wrong. And that's why we have law. Because if somebody violates the universal value, that person has to face the consequence. Otherwise, no one will get away from anything in the name of it is a personal choice. Second, our stage of life also determines what is right and what is wrong. As a student, as a householder, as a retired person, as a living chief, broad stages that our culture gives. You can take it age-wise also certain things, not necessarily only by this poor ashram yavasa, that is one which our sanatana gives. But as a child, you know, when you are in the hands of your parent or anybody, you kick them, will it be an offense? Now you become a 20 year old person and you kick them. You are still not like it is. It will determine what is right and what is wrong. As a person who was dependent, let us say, financially, I am not able to support my parents in financial way, I can help in some other ways. But now that I am earning, and if a parent is in the need and I don't support, and I dump them somewhere, and uh, you know, I even leave them like, like so many people do, they just dump their parents on a railway station, bus station, bus stop, somewhere, and they just disappear. It is such a sad thing for people to do, and the parent will face because now he can't even go back home because he knows that the child has a not him. Can we say it is wrong or right? The person has done wrong. No, no, who brought, who told the parent to bring me into the world without my consent? I don't know if you are aware, there was one boy who took a case also on the parent that who brought me into the world without my consent. <laughs> Ridiculous level of things go into. So your stage of life will determine what are the duties and what is right and what is wrong. As a student, how much work, hard work one is supposed to do and work and uh, do what one went for in the college or the school and study because how much hard work parents have put in to get you into that place. And they are still doing that hard work. And if I take a casual attitude and I say, ah, I am not interested, I don't want to study, I don't want to do, I don't want to be the Lord. 
And we say, I think you have a good example. And the people try to know. Then you should have the guts to say to the parents that I will not study and I don't want to study at all. I deal with my life the way I want to deal with it. You will have a responsibility. But one doesn't do that. One wants to go to the best of school study times. One wants to get bumped and appear as so called good to do and not to read it, you know, study properly and all that. Then that is wrong. So the purpose of knowing right and wrong is not to brand somebody. The purpose of knowing right and wrong is to make clear cut proper choices to improve ourselves and to make our potential manifest. So first is the duty, uh, sorry, the uh, universal values. Second is the roles that we sorry, the stage of life. Third is the roles that we play. As a son, as a friend, as a friend, this, uh, brother, employer, so many roles we from place. Each role has certain do's and don'ts. One should adhere to those, and especially when one is working in an organization, organization also will have their rules or not. Can one say that, no, I will the way I want to be able to help with the rules of the organization, there is nothing called right and wrong. It has to go by your policy. So your roles that one plays. As a friend, there are certain roles that one is expected to play. When your friend is in deep distress, should you be there or not for them? No, Swami, I am there only in good times. If you are not a good friend, that is wrong. So, roles of life, stage of life, universal values. Fourth, your own temperament also. Like Arjun wanting to run away from the battlefield there, in the name of Ayusa, was he doing the right thing? He is not made for that to go into the forest and become a sannyasi and meditate there. We would not have the problem of save the rhino or save the tiger because why not they would have been extinct. Arjun would have sat in the forest and killed all of them. <laughs> so he can't meditate. So, my swadha, my temperament, what is my temperament also determines. If I am not ready for something and I take that up, I can make a mess of it. What also results in maximum good, that is one of the criteria. By fighting this war, Arjun and Yudhishthir and Pandavas, they establish dharma. And that is in betterment of the society. <clears throat> Though there may be a lot of violence which happened, but that was a lot of cleansing that that society needed. So what will lead to the maximum good <coughs> in line with the higher values, <clears throat> universal values? That will also determine what is right and what is wrong. And finally, it is your conscience. If you have done the right thing, your conscience will not break. After you follow these few points, your conscience also will determine. You have a calm mind, you can sleep peacefully, you can look in the eyes of the elders, the gurus, Lord, you have not done anything wrong, you don't feel guilty. And you look at yourself, you don't feel shame, guilty, anything in the mirror when you see. Because you have done what has to be done. These few factors will help us to know what is right and what is wrong. And always remember the intention and the motive are very, very important. Can one say that the ignorance of the law? So, suppose I didn't know certain rules, income tax rules, suppose I don't know, sales tax rules, suppose I don't know, even some of the uh, rules made for you know, public, let us say, smoking in public is banned. Now somebody comes and finds us for it. If you say, I didn't know, will, will the law allow you to get away with it? Hmm. One has to know. One has to gain the knowledge. Same way, we have to know what is right and what is wrong, how to know what is right and what is wrong. So the scriptural literature helps us to do that. It is not that scriptures are saying, you should do this, you should not do this, this is like a commandment and you have to follow. Okay? Our culture doesn't give that way commandments. It gives principles of guidelines by which we can find out what is right and what is wrong. And in some situations, there are instructions also given that these are the things which are right, these are the things which are wrong. 
but they are not what we say as the lines of uh, stone. They are flexible also depending on the situation, but in line with these principles that we discussed. That's the literature which helps us to understand this is called the Smritis. In our culture, those are the Smritis. Vedas are the eternal principles, they are called Shruti. And the Smritis, they give the principles as per time, how contexts have changed, how to apply these values, principles in the changing times. So many books are there for it. There are many great masters who have written it in on one book. There is Yaki Valke Smriti, Manu Smriti, Parashva Smriti, so many books are there. Specifically for Kali Yuga, it is the Smriti which is Parashva Smriti. Vedatayaji's father, he wrote that book, Parashva Smriti. And of course, it can be adapted to the present times also. It is not necessary, it has to be followed as it is in today's times. So this is the broad general understanding of right and wrong. And if we find it difficult to read the Vedas or the Smritis, we can definitely read Bhagavad Gita. And that is also a Smriti which will help us to understand how to know what is right, what is wrong, how to think about the decision making. So in the 16th chapter, the Lord says this that how to know what is right and wrong? Scriptures are the valid means. If you want to study science, which books will you take up? Will you take up any books of art and literature and then try to figure out science from that? If you want to study architecture, which books will you take? Books on architecture. If you want to understand morality and ethics, which books will you take? You have to take the, from spiritual literature, you have to take the Smriti Sambhi Gita. And lots of things which are written in that are what the books of law also may say. So the idea here is the right means of knowledge we have to choose. To understand about the self, to understand higher values, to understand the oneness of this individual with the world and creation. If we choose books of science, we are limiting ourselves because they are not a valid means. They can only explain about certain phenomena and the uh, reason why certain things happen. But the deeper oneness of life, if one has to understand, one has to go to the valid means. And right and wrong is based on those deeper values what we saw in the morning. Like we said, you know, there is a oneness in all of us. So if I hurt somebody and do something wrong, whom am I hurting first? Me as an individual and me also as this whole one being that the deeper aspect of life is that it is like my hand poking my own eye so if I hurt somebody that other person also is me in another form as consciousness so I am only hurting the other person who is me only and that's why our culture places right and wrong in this deeper context of vision of oneness it is not just some books and books now this is the basic background I have given you. 